this is the second video of the three video series in this video we will look at the steps which we are going to follow to make a financial model from scratch so please watch this video till the end we are making a three statement financial model so we'll use income statement balance sheet and cash flow statement and i urge you to like this video because if i get 100 likes on all the three videos then I am going to share financial modeling intermediate. This is financial modeling for beginners. Please share these three videos with your friends who are beginning in financial modeling or want to begin in financial modeling. This is the crisp way to start. I will summarize financial modeling in four steps. The first step I will say is EBITDA forecast. Second step I will say is EBIT forecast. Third one is PAT forecast. And the fourth one is balance sheet and cash flow statement. So the fourth one is basically cash flow statement and balance sheet. Before that, we have only this. So the first step is here, that is EBITDA forecast. Second step is here, that is EBIT forecast. Third is here, that is PAT forecast. The earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization let's let's take an example of say pvr okay now pvr revenue will increase by increasing the number of screens if i have say 400 screens today then i'll add 100 more screens my revenue will increase a major revenue driver in pvr's case is the number of screens in dmart's case is the number of stores if my sales is going to increase, definitely my cost drivers will increase as well. If I open one more store, raw material cost will increase as well. Operating expenses will increase as well, like the salaries, like the electricity cost. Somewhere or the other, these costs are also related to maybe the number of stores or these costs are related to sales. So the revenue driver for PVR was the most important one was the number of screens. Uh, for DMART, it is number of stores. And for TCS, it will be number of number of man hours. When you think about cost of PVR, it will be related to revenue. Most probably, it will be related to revenue. Yeah, so number of hours is the revenue driver. And number of what will be the cost driver? Yeah, so can I say number of employees is my cost driver? So guys, understanding revenue driver and cost driver is a very important part in financial modeling. Whenever you make a new model for a different company or different industry, you need to go deep into how they are earning revenues, what all segments are there, what all, the what all are the drivers for the revenue, how the cost is going to change and then and then only you can go ahead and follow the step that is the first step EBITDA forecast because for EBITDA you need revenue you need costs for that you need revenue drivers and you need cost drivers so there is a lot to learn believe me this is just the start so I'll just write it over here that is for the first step that is EBITDA forecast you need to understand revenue and cost drivers once you understand what are the revenue drivers and what are the cost drivers, then actually you are going into the business model. But you should see why the revenue is increasing or why the revenue is decreasing. The answer behind why will make you understand the business. So for example, maybe let's say PVR's revenue is increasing. So it might increase maybe due to the number of screens. It might increase due to say the ticket price. So why is it increasing? We have to understand that. So it can increase because of any of these reasons. And once we start understanding these reasons, we are actually getting into the business model. So understanding EBITDA is the most important thing before you start making any model. Now the second step is EBIT forecast that is EBIT earnings before interest and tax. For that reason, we need depreciation. 
So depreciation is linked to what? It's linked to capex. Note it down and try to learn because we are going to follow these steps in the next video where we are going to apply these steps and make a bus model from scratch. So if you are doing more and more capex and you are adding on to your assets, then your depreciation is going to increase as well and EBIT will reduce. So think about an intangible asset, for example, a copyright, a patent, a trademark. So those intangible assets which you can't feel or touch are amortized and not depreciated. So guys, you have to make a fixed asset schedule in this case. To forecast a bit, you will have to make a fixed asset schedule. So the first step is EBITDA forecast. Second is EBIT forecast. For EBITDA forecast, you need revenue drivers and cost drivers. For EBIT forecast, you need a fixed asset schedule. Okay, the third step is PAT forecast. That is profit after tax. What do you need to go from EBIT forecast to PAT forecast? You need interest and you need taxes. So you have to make a debt schedule and tax schedule for doing the third step. So now it completely depends upon how much out of the capex, how much, see, please pay attention. How much out of the capex is raised from debt? If you are raising a lot of debt, your interest costs are going to increase. And if you are not raising a lot of debt, your interest cost will not go up. So a debt schedule will help you forecast profit after tax. These three steps, we will be able to make a profit and loss statement. We will be able to forecast the first statement that is profit and loss statement. So I am repeating things again and again. You know, I am repeating the step names of the steps. I'm repeating what you need to do in these steps. Why I'm doing that? Because our brain functions in that way. It's not a computer where, you know, you did it once and, you know, it's speeded. No, you need to revise as I told you, and then you need to recall, right? Please follow along. That is firstly, what you need to do is a bit tough forecast for that. What do you need? You need revenue drivers. You need cost drivers. Second step you need to do is a bit forecast for that. What you need is depreciation amortization. Uh, third step is profit after tax forecast. What you will need for this, you will need a debt schedule and a tax schedule. We are done with forecasting profit and loss statement, the income statement. As you see, one is return at the top. This is the first thing that we are going to do. And then two is return over here. So we are going to go to the balance sheet now. Now under balance sheet, we have assets, liabilities and equity, three parts. We, we all of us know that asset equal to equity plus liability. What I'll do is I'll, I'm talking about the fourth step that is balance sheet and cash flow statement. So first we will make balance sheet. We will keep cash as blank initially. So for having the cash over here in the balance sheet, we need to have, we need to have cash flow statement with us. So first you will make balance sheet. We will keep cash as blank initially. Then from fixed asset schedule, you will bring fixed assets from debt schedule. You will bring debt. Then you will go to, you know, the current assets, current liabilities. So when we will talk about, you know, making models, then you will understand more. Right now, what we are doing is we are just theoretically understanding what are the steps. Then once you are done with all of these, you will go to the cash flow statement. And in cash flow statement, you can see everything is linked from somewhere else. You can see the arrows coming in. You guys can see the arrows coming in from cash flow for cash flow from operating activities. PAT coming in from income statement, depreciation coming in from income statement, other two things that is change in working capital coming in from balance sheet. So as you see all these things coming in, in cash flow from operating activities, all these things coming in from cash flow from operating activities, 
are coming in from profit and loss statement and balance sheet similarly in cash flow from investing activity it will come from fixed asset na ki fixed asset mein kitna capex kiya it is the capex part cash flow from investing activity it is the capital expenditure part which is again coming from balance sheet you can also bring it from fixed asset schedule that how much how much how much of fixed assets are you buying if you are purchasing more fixed assets capex will be more cash flow from investing will be more similarly in case of cash flow from financing activity it is linking to balance sheet only so eventually everything in cash flow statement is linked to balance sheet and income statement and then what we'll do at the end yes we will transfer the cash to balance sheet perfect so i hope you guys like the session if you like the session you can share this with your friends and this was a very crisp video where i covered a lot of things so maybe you can consider watching this one more time before you go to the next video where we are going to apply these four steps starting from scratch taking our own assumptions so see you there